Making it onto the roster of the Super Smash Bros. series is one of the biggest honors a video game character can receive. The roster of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is filled with icons, and each one of them are incredibly special to people all around the world. But what about the losers that don't make it on the roster? While making it on the roster isn't the only way a character can be represented in the Super Smash Bros. series, as there's also spirits, me costumes, and our topic for today, assist trophies. Essentially, the assist trophy is an item that will spawn a random character to help the person who summoned them win the fight. These characters can be anything from people based on franchises in the roster, to even characters from games not otherwise represented. Most of these are incredibly unique with how they function, but that also means that some of them were bound to be worse than others. So today, I thought it would be fun to rank every assist trophy from worst to best. But since people have done this video before, I thought I would also throw in all the Pokeball Pokemon as well. These act just like assist trophies, but they're all Pokemon and come from the Pokeball items, so it makes sense that they'd share a list. Now I want to make it very clear that this is not a power ranking. Despite me saying this for the past few rankings, people still somehow get confused. This is based on how much I like the assist trophy based on their creativity and how fun they are to use. Yes, the power of the assist trophy can help it in the ranking, but it is not the main factor here. But with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's jump right into our worst assist trophy. So you remember how I said the assist trophy slash Pokemon is supposed to help the player who summoned it? Well, throw that in the trash as there are several that do not help at all and can even hurt the player who used it. These obviously suck because if you pick up the item, you probably want it to actually help you out. Of these, I find the absolute worst to be 114 Palkia. This guy will flip the screen upside down, making it very difficult to fight in. Not only is this annoying, but it's also a pretty boring gimmick. Also, you may notice I'll go through these pretty quickly as many of them are quite simple, so I don't have much more to add on to here other than he sucks. 113, Nightmare. Instead of flipping the screen, it will now be in engulfed in darkness. I only put it higher than Palkia since I find the darkness to be slightly more interesting. 112, Nintendog. This will cause the dog to block the vision of everyone, once again just being annoying for all players. 111, Squid Sisters. This will cause the screen to zoom in on the Squid Sisters, shrinking the blast zones in the process. I think it's a bit better than the others since it's more creative, plus the player who picked up the assist trophy will likely be in a more advantageous spot to take advantage of it. 110, The Devil. He'll direct the screen to shift around either up, down, left, or right. I like him more than the others since this is basically exactly what he does in the game he's from, Devil World. While it does still hurt every player, I think this gimmick does make sense for this guy. 109, Skull Kid. He'll give one of three effects. He can either flip the screen, flip the player's controls, or make them invisible. The unpredictability puts us above the others, though he is still sadly more of a nuisance than anything. Oh, and Majora's Mask is one of my favorite games, so I might be a little biased. 108, Riki. This is a bit of an interesting case, as he can both help or hurt the player that used him. He has six different moves he can use. Happy Happy will raise the attack power of all fighters, and You Can Do It will heal nearby players. Since those apply to everyone, that means it doesn't really help the player that summoned him much. The spell Yoink will also pull items towards him, which which can help anyone depending on their positioning. However, the other spells can damage the opponent in some way. Freezenate will freeze them, Bedtime puts them to sleep, and Roly Poly trips them. The fact that it can actually attack the opponents is what puts it higher than the last few, but the fact that it can still help them definitely hurts. 107, Goldeen. Finally, we've encountered another Pokemon. This guy does nothing. Like, literally nothing. The reason it's higher than the last few, though, is at least it isn't annoying to the person who used it. Oh, and also, this absolutely should have been Magikarp, considering it's famous for doing nothing. 106, Mew. He also does nothing. It's by far the rarest Pokeball Pokemon, though, so as a bit of an Easter egg, it is kinda neat. 105, Alolan Executor. Yes, technically, this one also hurts both players, but I just find the concept funny enough to save this one a bit. Basically, it acts as a wall, which fits this tall Alolan form perfectly. 104, Abra. Okay, onto a system Pokemon that actually helped the person who used it. Abra will simply teleport the opponents around the stage. It's extremely hard to use this effectively since you can't choose where the Abra teleports, but it can be annoying to your opponent, so I guess that's a plus. 103, Dr. Wright. Coming from SimCity, he'll spawn in a few buildings in front of him for a few seconds upon being summoned. If the opponent touches them, they'll take damage. This is just kind of boring and sort of hard to use well. I mean, the buildings aren't even that big, so all the opponent has to do is just not go near them. 102, Chest Spin. He'll cause some mini explosions around him. Like Dr. Wright, though, this is very easy to avoid. I do like Chest Spin as a character a smidge more, though. 101, Swirlix. This will make any opponent nearby move significantly slower. This does have the same problem as the last two, though, as the area of effect is way too small to really be helpful. The idea is a bit more creative, so that gave it a boost. 100, Vince. This was honestly a difficult one to place. He will basically draw a piece of art over all the opponents in the match. These will cause constant damage, which does make it technically stronger than the last few. However, the artwork completely obscures the opponents, meaning the player who used the assist trophy is at a bit of a disadvantage 
advantage since you can't see what your opponent is doing. Like I said, the only thing saving this is the fact that it deals damage, because otherwise, this might be one of the absolute worst in the game. 99, Eevee. This is pretty much the most basic assist trophy slash Pokeball Pokemon in the game, as it simply just runs and tackles the opponent. I can see why they did this for Eevee since he's supposed to be a basic normal type, but I don't know, I think a gimmick using as many different Eevee illusions would have been way cooler. At least it's decently functional, just not very exciting. 98, Fletchling. He basically does the same thing Eevee does, though his pecs just sort of make the opponent flinch. He probably is worse than Eevee functionally, and I do like Eevee as a Pokemon more, however I think this has a lot less missed potential, so it got the edge. 97, Starfy. Okay, first off, I hate you. When I finished outlining the ranking, I was missing one assist trophy, and it took me like 25 minutes to figure out which one. Okay, I know it's not Starfy's fault, I just wanted to be a hater. He just sort of spins around to lightly attack the opponent. Again, nothing special. 96, Metagross. He'll stomp the ground and bury opponents nearby. While this does have the small area of attack problem, his range is a bit bigger than the last few and can lead to more punishing attacks. 95, Spupa. Once again, another small ranged one, but I do think its mechanic is really cool. Basically, if anyone attacks Spupa, including the player who used him, it'll release spores that'll stun nearby opponents. The spores won't affect the player who used the Pokeball though, so this leads to a very interesting dynamic as you have to try and find the right way to hit it to catch your opponent. 94, Oshawa. He uses Surf and will push opponents off the stage. This is like a slightly more effective Eevee, but even then, his knockback can be pretty weak. I do like Oshawa though, so that's something I guess. 93, Springman. We do not need more arms content in Smash. He basically just feels like a beta min min. I know he predates her in the game, but I'm judging from a modern lens, so I think he's kinda lame. He does work perfectly fine attacking from a range, though. 92, Mother Brain. I don't know why, but I've always sort of disliked this thing. It'll grow in size and shoot out a laser beam. The attack works perfectly fine, I just personally think it can be somewhat easy to avoid, and it acts as a wall for every character, being annoying even to the person who used it. 91, Dylan. He does what every Sonic player does and spam Spin Dash. He's just a fine assist trophy, not really that special, and isn't really that hard to avoid. 90, Moltres. If touched by an opponent, they'll be sent flying. This is once again another one that has a somewhat small range and isn't particularly cool looking, but at least it does do a lot if it manages to hit. 89, Phosphora. She will send out a ton of random projectiles toward the opponent, though they are quite weak. 88, Lugia. It'll jump into the background and shoot out wind towards the screen. This is in all honesty just kinda boring, I didn't even remember this was the attack Lugia did before working on this. 87, Deoxys. He'll shoot out a massive beam from the sky toward the ground. There's also a Pokemon that I think does this pillar attack much cooler later on, so that hurt Deoxys even more. 86, Arcade Bunny. This will turn the match into a massive crane game where it tries to grab the opponent. If successful, it'll drag the opponent into the top blast zone. Conceptually, I think this is a really neat assist, though just like in an actual crane game, it's impossible to ever win since the opponent can just just fall out before getting to the top. 85, Flies in Hand. This is again another one I like in concept. It takes the Flies in Hand from Mario Paint and has the hand try to swat at the screen. It mostly focuses on the Flies instead of the opponents though, so it can be somewhat easy to avoid. 84, Burrowing Snarget. Taken from the Pikmin series, this bird will dig up from the ground near the opponent to strongly peck at them. This is certainly much more functional than some of the others we've talked about, though I don't find the mechanic to be that interesting. 83, The Thwomp. This guy will do the exact same thing it does in the Mario series, slam down when the opponent goes below them. Trust me, I really wanted to put this guy higher since I love Thwomp, but he just attacks far too slowly. Luckily, he can teleport a bit to get into better positions, but I still think he is a bit tricky to use. 82, Solgaleo. He'll just charge toward the player, which is pretty boring and honestly weaker than you'd think, but he's harder to avoid, making him a bit more useful than the others we've seen so far. 81, Blossom. She'll sing a little song that will cause nearby opponents to go to sleep. Yes, the area of effect is quite small, however, falling asleep can lead to a lot more punishing attacks than being slowed down, for example. Plus, you can also push Blossom, which isn't that big of a help, but it can be used a bit. 80, Victini, and while we're at it, 79 Xerneas. Now yes, these are both undeniably very strong. Victini will give the player their final smash, and Xerneas will turn the player gold, which powers up their attacks. Personally though, I think these are a bit uninspired. I mean, they could have had Xerneas doing Twinkle Tackle. Look how awesome this move looks. Yeah, I know people will disagree with the placing, but remember, this is based on how much I like the mechanics, and I just found these to be kind of boring. 78, Samurai Goro. He just sort of swings his sword around and charges the opponent. While he is hard to dodge, he's not particularly strong, nor is his moveset very interesting. 77, Girahim. He's like Samurai Goro, but a little bit more fancy, being able to teleport around. I still find him to be a bit boring, though. 76, Togedemaru. 75, Dedene. And 74, Tapu Koko. All three of these Pokemon generate a big electric field around them. They all do very a little bit in their functionality, but they're all just about the most generic 
generic thing you could think of for an electric type Pokemon. Of the three, Dedenne is my favorite Pokemon, but Tapu Koko's is definitely the strongest, so he got the edge. 73 Inke. Every so often, he'll fall over and cause any opponents on the ground to trip. I like this mechanic, and while it is more of a minor help when compared to some of the entries later, I think this is helpful enough to place it around here on the list. 72 Jeff. He will launch a ton of rockets toward the opponent, which is definitely a cool concept. I was gonna place him higher, but the rockets are both a lot weaker and easier to avoid than I thought. 71 The Pac-Man Ghosts. This spawns an Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde to roam around the screen just like they do in the original Pac-Man. While they are a bit weak, I think this is a perfectly fitting role for them, so I like the assist trophy. 70 Lunala. They'll fly into the background and shoot a giant beam towards the stage, similar to Zero Suit Samus's final smash. This beam can be quite strong and honestly looks pretty neat as well. We're definitely starting to get to the point where the assist trophies in Pokemon are getting much stronger. 69 Rodin. He's basically just a weaker Bayonetta, which may seem like a downside, but I do really like how Rodin's attacks look. Plus, he also gives the player an item upon disappearing, which is a neat little touch. 68 Chain Chomp. What the dog do? They function exactly the same as they do in the Mario series, being stuck in one spot and lunging towards opponents. Its area of attack is also quite large, and getting hit deals a ton of damage. It is a bit slow, but it's certainly still a very good assist trophy. Our next few guys all share a similar purpose, that being to deal minimal damage and knock back to the opponents, but making them constantly flinch. This may seem pointless, but it's actually quite helpful as you can actually attack the opponent while they're stuck in these. This type of attack is pretty common though, so it's hard to really place them up high despite their decent usefulness. 67 Fennekin and 66 Vulpix. These two are at the bottom since they're pretty much the exact same as each other. Out of the two, I like Vulpix more as a Pokemon. 65 Staryu, 64 the Princess Sable, Sable, whatever, 63 Snivy, and 62 Meow. The order of these four were just determined by how much I like the Pokemon or character in the case of the Prince. 61 Alolan Vulpix. 60 Obama Snow. And 59 Kira. These three each freeze the opponent, though the methods of which they use to do this is unique from one another, which is why they got to be a bit higher than the Electric Trio from earlier. Alolan Vulpix will fire an ice ball in front of it, Obama Snow will create nice wind and even punch its opponents, and Kira will freeze both sides of him. All three of these essentially keep the opponents in the same place like the last few, but since it uses ice, it's a bit more unique. 58, Knuckles. Like the burrowing Snarget we saw earlier, he'll be able to dig through the ground toward the opponent. He has a much stronger variety of attacks though, being able to punch and use the homing attack. Plus, I like Knuckles as a character a lot, so that certainly helped him out here. 57, the Hammer Bro. He'll throw hammers at the opponents in the exact same way he does in the mainline Mario series. Of the Mario enemies, I think he fits best as an assist trophy just due to how infamous they are. Their attacks also work quite well, so that is certainly a plus. 56, Meloetta, and 55, Wily Capsule. Both of these summon massive projectiles to fly around the stage to attack opponents. While Meloetta is probably a bit stronger, I like Wily Capsule more for two reasons. One, his attacks have more variety than just knockback, as some will also be able to stun or freeze opponents. Secondly, upon being KO'd, he'll land on the ground and start begging, being a reference to the Mega Man series, which is pretty neat. 54, Latios and Latias. These two will rapidly fly across the stage, dealing a bit of damage as they do so. While they are a bit weak, they are pretty difficult to avoid and can easily put the opponent in a bad spot. 53, Andros. He'll go into the background and shoot up platforms toward the stage, being a reference to his fight in Star Fox. Honestly, my favorite part about this is that they use his original look, as it makes him look much more distinct than if they went with his modern design. He also shoots out a lot of platforms, which are definitely effective in hurting the opponent. 52, Alolan Raichu. He'll surf around on his tail, dealing massive damage to those he hits. Since he flies around the stage, he can actually be quite difficult to avoid. Add on that I really like Raichu as a Pokemon, and this guy got to place pretty highly. 51, Scizor. He'll use Fury Cutter as he follows down opponents. While the attack is a bit basic, I once again like Scizor as a Pokemon. He's also pretty difficult to avoid completely, as he'll follow his opponents. 50, Knuckle Joe. He does a bunch of rapid punches before doing a strong one. Yeah, he's pretty simple like Scizor, but he's also fairly effective, so I like him. 49, Crystal. She'll basically act the same as the last two, but she'll be able to freeze people, which is a nice little addition. 48, Alucard. While he can't freeze like Crystal, he does have a bat charge on top of his general swipes. I also just think the way his swipes look is pretty funny as well. My favorite thing about this guy, though, has to do with the fact that he can't spawn on the Wii Fit Studio stage. Several assist trophies can't spawn on certain stages, but this one is notable because it's a reference to how vampires can't be seen on mirrors, which is pretty cute. 47, Shovel Knight. He will use his shovel to attack opponents and dig up items from the ground. I just really like how close he looks and acts to his original game despite now being in 3D. There's a ton of charm with this guy, and his uses are decently unique too. 46, Togepi. It'll use Metronome, which can cause a large number of random effects that your opponent will have to deal with. Powder Snow will be able to freeze them, Leech Seed will place a flower on the opponent's head to deal damage, Hypnosis will put them to sleep, and Magnitude will cause anyone nearby Togepi to get buried. I really like the large variety of attacks, which makes this a lot more fun to use. Sadly though, there is one more thing Togepi can do, that being Smoke Screen, which will cause the screen to go dark. Luckily, this is the rarest of the five spells, only having a 7.1% chance of happening, but it did still hurt Togebi a smidge. 45, Ashley. She too will do random spells, but she will always constantly damage the opponent and cause slowness in her radius. I couldn't find a good list of what attacks she can do, though some of them can somewhat help the opponent, like making them invisible. Still, it's a majority help to the player who used it, so I like her. 44, Akira. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, his look is pretty much the main reason he's so high. Just like Andros, they went with the classic design for the
for the character that makes him look much more distinct. His attacks are also fairly strong too, though it's nothing too special. 43, Chef Kawasaki. Upon getting summoned, he'll start to cook food that the player who used him can actually eat. But what is he cooking? Well, it's your opponents, as he'll drag them into the pot. I think this ability from the Kirby series translates pretty perfectly into Smash, so I like him a lot. Sure, your opponent can also eat the food, but the person who used the assist trophy will be in a much better place to do so. 42, Takamaru. This guy has a really interesting moveset. He'll be able to swing his sword, but also throw pinwheel knives around him in a really interesting pattern. I think the unique way he throws these knives makes him much more interesting than he would be otherwise. Overall, a pretty solid assist trophy in terms of both strength and uniqueness. 41, Waluigi. You finally got to the character that's pretty much the face of assist trophies. He'll be able to chase after people and stomp them into the ground. I have always found this attack to be really funny and it can send you at some pretty wild angles at times. After stomping, he'll be able to whack people away using his tennis racket. This attack isn't really based on much besides the tennis racket from Mario Tennis, Waluigi's Origin game, but he's still a fun sight to see. 40, Bomberman. He does exactly what you'd expect, placing his famous bombs that explode in the cardinal directions. Not only can these be quite hard to dodge since he places down a few of them, but you as the player can actually move them by attacking them as well. That added interactability definitely gave him a little bit of a boost. 39. I have completely forgotten this guy's name. If you all know what it is, please make sure to leave it in the comments. I just really like how he moves around and attacks. It's fairly strong and visually memorable, so he's always a treat to get. 38, Isaac. He uses three different attacks that can either push the opponent off the stage, slam them into the ground, or pull them into the top blast zone. I once again like the variety of attacks here, and each of them can be pretty helpful. 37, Go Goat. On the surface, this may seem like a bit of a weird choice, as pretty much all he does is charge at the opponent. The reason he gets to place so high, though, is because of his secondary use, where you can actually ride on top of them, being a reference to how they work in the Pokemon series. It's always fun to summon one and try to catch a ride during the fight. They definitely didn't need to add this Easter egg, but it makes Go Goat so much more memorable. 36, Entei. He'll spawn a pillar of fire over himself that will last for a few seconds. Any opponents caught in the attack will receive constant damage and receive massive knockback once it finishes. Now we saw pillar attacks before, so what makes this any different? Well, for one, it looks a lot better, but it's also a lot stronger. Tossing your opponents into the pillar of fire feels so much more satisfying in this case when compared to Deoxys. 35, Guile. He'll spend his time crouching in place and occasionally shooting out projectiles. If the opponents go near him, they'll get hit by Flash Kick, which will deal a ton of damage. My favorite part about him, though, has to do with him not doing that move. See, there's a very rare chance that he can actually miss input, which is how you can mess up the input for it in Street Fighter. I absolutely love this Easter egg, so that definitely helped him out. 34, Metroid. This will latch onto someone and deal constant damage, which can be very helpful as it'll interrupt whatever the attack the player was doing. It's also very hard to avoid, though it can be shaken off. I think my favorite little detail, though, is the fact that it can only be KO'd by getting frozen, which is just like the Metroid series. 33, Claptrap. It'll follow enemies and viciously chomp at them. This both keeps them in place so you can hit them with a strong attack, or after a period of time, Claptrap will launch the opponent themselves. He may be a bit small, but it's definitely pretty helpful. 32, Darkrai. He will shoot out a very large Dark Ball in front of him that'll cause people to go to sleep. Like I said with Blossom earlier, sleep is very helpful for letting the player land a massive attack, making this Pokemon quite useful. I also just like how the attack looks in general. 31, Yuri. Speaking of really cool aesthetics, this gives the screen a very unique effect as she attempts to take a picture of the opponents. If she's successful, she'll deal damage and lock them in place for a little bit, leaving them wide open. Yeah, the use is pretty good, but really it's the aesthetics here that help it out the most. 30, Suicune. He just shoots out a massive ice beam forward. What makes this better than the other ice Pokemon though? Well, it has to do with just how aggressive the knockback is. I mean, opponents just go flying. I guess that makes sense for a legendary Pokemon, but man, this one is just so violent. 29, Lin. Upon being summoned, she'll wait in place for a moment before suddenly teleporting to an opponent and striking them with her super strong sword. While you can avoid her decently well if you're paying attention, in the chaos of a game with items, she can easily catch someone off guard. Plus, I think it just looks really cool, especially since she gets a special zoom in effect that's reserved for strong attacks. 28, Genesec. He'll shoot out several blasts of energy and then one massive blast that usually reaches across the entire stage. I think this gimmick fits the Pokemon perfectly and is always a treat to use. Considering how many attacks he performs, it could also be decently difficult to avoid. 27, Starman. He'll shoot out several bolts of lightning toward nearby players, which deal a lot of damage. He can also teleport around, making him even more powerful. This is all great and would definitely place him highly, but once again, he's an assist trophy to get a really cool Easter egg. Upon getting KO'd, a giant smash text will appear on screen, obviously referencing Earthbound. This might just be my favorite Easter egg related to assist trophies because it just looks so good. 26, Gray Fox. He'll run up to and attack opponents. This would probably put him near Knuckle Joe and Scizor, however, he also has the unique mechanic of reflecting all projectiles that hit him. This makes him exponentially more helpful, so I think he's definitely earned a spot here. 25, Gardevoir. While she isn't able to attack, she does maintain the reflectability from her last entry. However, the range is much larger. This would be helpful enough in a normal match, but considering you'd see her when you have items on, it becomes infinitely more valuable as it basically gives you a safe zone to collect more items and attack people. This gimmick is also different from anyone else, so that makes me like it. 24, Keldeo. This is pretty simple. He'll just run up to players and use his horn to swipe at
at that. What makes it play so high up then? Well, it's just because of the size and power behind this. It's incredibly strong, and considering he runs toward players, it can be very difficult to dodge as well. Originally, I did have him much lower on the list, but I feel like the strength behind this attack is just way too good to pass up. 23, Zorawar. He basically works like Greninja's Final Smash, and Ike's Final Smash, and Cloud's Final Smash, and me Brawl. Okay, a lot of characters have similar attacks to it, but it looks cool, okay? It'll strike an opponent and cause them to hover over the stage, where it can then deal a ton of damage before sending them back down. I love how this looks, which may be biased since I do like him as a Pokemon, but I just get really excited whenever I see him. Sadly, his final attack does come off as a bit weak since it looks so visually similar to the Final Smashes I mentioned before, but I still think he is a good Pokemon. 22, Mimikyu. He'll grab any opponent it can and drag them under its rag to deal a ton of damage. While it's attacking, the player can also hit the opponent from the outside. The best part though is if the opponent is at over 100%, they will die instantly, just like certain final smashes. This is an absolute, perfect use for Mimikyu's character. It's unique and even a little scary. 21. Pong. Um, actually, it's color TV game 15. I just love how well implemented this is. It's basically just a game of Pong played over the match. A ball goes bouncing around and will deal damage to the opponent. Sure, it may be a bit simple, but I think that works out for it. 20. Nikki. She can draw a variety of different things on the screen to attack the opponent. These could be a monster, a ghost, a pinwheel, a bunch of birds, and even a bullet bill. The variety here helps Nikki become one of my favorites. The rarest thing she can draw, though, is the Smash Ball, which is a way more interesting way to give the player their final smash than Victini just giving it to them. 19. Cap'n. He takes on his role from Animal Crossing City Folk, driving a bus to pick people. Up. Once he captures someone, he'll attempt to ride off screen, which is always super funny because of how fearful the characters look for wherever Cap'n is taking them. While the attack can be mashed out of, Cap'n stays around for quite a while, making him pretty difficult to deal with. 18. Zero. He has a large variety of attacks such as shooting out a green beam and of course using his sword. What makes him play so highly though is just how powerful this sword is as it can easily kill opponents at pretty early percents. His sword also just looks cool, so that's a nice little bonus. 17. Minna. She might have one of my favorite animations of any assist trophy. She'll basically tell teleport around the stage and whip her hair around to try to catch an opponent. If she's successful, then she'll viciously toss them away, which just feels fantastic. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just animated so well that you can feel how hard people get thrown out, making this a ton of fun to use. 16. Rathalos. This is the first assist trophy in the series to also be a boss in the same game. I think the introduction of this is really neat, and of course, Rathalos is very powerful because of that boss status. It can't do every attack it has from the boss fights, but the mere fact that you can get a giant boss dragon fighting on your side is enough to place this highly. 15. Marshadow. He'll bury himself in the ground and will appear out of a shadow behind the opponent. If they're hit by this, it's almost a guaranteed death no matter what percent they're at, as not only will it stun them, but Marshadow also does a powerful punch afterwards. During this stun time, the player who used the Pokeball can also attack the opponents, leading to some absolutely brutal kills. 14. P -m 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 Whatever. The main gimmick behind this Pokemon is that the person who summoned it can pick him up and throw it at the opponent. Not only is this very unique, but it's also pretty powerful because the Pokemon will extend out a massive fist that deals a ton of damage. It's one of the most versatile Pokemon, which makes it one of the most fun to use. 13. Sheriff. This guy always causes a ton of chaos. He'll shoot out a ton of bullets toward the opponents around him, which deals a large amount of knockback. His unique pixelated look also makes him one of the more memorable assist trophies. 12 Garatina and 11 Kyogre. So you all know the Gust Bellows, right? Everyone's, uh, favorite item. Well, these two Pokemon are basically that, but bigger. Or in other words, they are extremely powerful. It's very difficult to avoid their blasts of wind or water, and surviving after getting hit is even more difficult. I place Kyogre a bit higher since he can move up and down while he does this, but it's safe to say that you'll be pretty happy getting either one of these two during a match. 10. Dr. Kawashima. See, this placing is hilarious because this guy's gimmick is all about adding up to 10. Please laugh. I've always liked this guy for a number of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, that one I didn't even mean to do. <laughs> Mechanically, it's pretty solid, as a ton of numbers will fly around the screen. If they add up to 10 or more, they'll explode, which can deal a lot of damage. This is really good for not only damaging the opponents, but also teaching Smash players math, because we desperately need that. I also love how the background changes to match the Brain Age aesthetic, making this one of the most visually distinct assist trophies in the series. 9. Snorlax. Okay, this one is just funny. He'll jump into the sky and then come crashing back down toward the stage, but this time, he'll be 10 times bigger and deal a ton of damage. I don't think this is like anything Snorlax has ever done, but at the same same time, I love it. The concept is funny, and due to his size and power, it works very well. 8. Arceus. If you remember Inkei from earlier in the list, this functions somewhat similarly. This time though, Arceus will spike anyone that's in the air. The spike is basically impossible to survive if you're off stage, making this one of the most fun to try and time the attacks with. It's also a lot harder to avoid being in the air in Smash as opposed to being on the ground, making this significantly better than Inkei. 7. Tiki. Yeah, this is probably the strongest assist trophy. She will turn into a dragon and breathe fire towards the opponents. For some reason though, the damage here is way larger than pretty much 
much any other assist trophy. It's pretty hard to dodge too, making this one of the absolute best assist trophies to pick up. Had this been a purely power ranking, she'd likely be number one. Six, Beware. In a similar boat, he's one of the most powerful Pokemon. His uppercut can kill super early and it can be quite difficult to avoid seeing as Beware remains on stage for a decent amount of time. He's basically the Tiki equivalent for the Pokeball, though I like Beware a little bit more as a character, so he got the edge. Five, The Black Knight. He ends off this trio of placing highly because of their power. While he is technically worse than the last two since he's slow, that just means his actual attacks are even stronger. That's not to say he's easy to avoid though, his sword is massive and he strikes several times. The reason I like him best of the three though is just because of how he's animated, even getting the special zoom I mentioned earlier. Overall, this might just be the scariest assist trophy and I love it for that reason. Four, Electrode. Okay, I know this may be a bit hypocritical, but I just love the mechanics behind him. He'll use self-destruct which can deal a ton of damage and knockback. The reason I like him so much though has to do with the fact that he can be picked up, but only just as he's about to explode. That gives him an extremely interesting risk and reward system which they didn't need to add on, but it makes him so much better. Three, Shadow. He'll use his famous Chaos Control, slowing down every opponent on screen. There's no way to avoid this, making him incredibly scary. He'll also completely freeze opponents in place at the end, making this one of the most deadly assist trophies in the series. Add on that Shadow is an extremely popular character in general, and you get a pretty good assist trophy, though I do think it'd be cool if he became a full character at some point. Two, Ditto. This is absolutely my favorite Pokeball Pokemon. Upon being summoned, he'll use Transform and actually become the fighter that summoned him for a short period of time. Not only is this pretty helpful, but it's also one of the most unique gimmicks we've seen, and it fits the Pokemon perfectly. I also like how Ditto keeps his own color scheme. While it may not be accurate to the home series, I honestly like the unique look more. I was very excited to see him get added to Ultimate, especially since he was supposed to be in Melee but was removed. But my number one spot was absolutely no contest, as it has to go to the moon. First off, like I said earlier in the video, Majora's Mask is one of my favorite games ever made, so I was already biased towards this. Secondly, its mechanics are perfect. Upon being summoned, it will appear in the background and then come crashing down towards the stage. Seeing as it is the moon, this is both very powerful and very big, making him one of the best assist trophies in the game. The atmosphere around this trophy is also fantastic, as the sky will rapidly turn more and more red as the moon gets closer. Rocks also fly around the screen, making this one of the best looking assist trophy attacks in the game. This also doesn't have the burden of being a character that people want to see on the roster. I mean, I'm sure there is some insane person that wants the moon to be playable, but overall, he's absolutely perfect as an assist trophy. Other characters like Waluigi, Shadow, and Skull Kid have the fact that they could be great characters souring the spot that they're in the game, but the moon doesn't have that problem. So for all those reasons, I think the moon is easily the best assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you all hate Smash Ultimate because they cut the Lakitu and Spiny's assist trophy? Let me know in the comments. This list was super difficult to put together. I moved many of these characters several spots while writing the script. I think the way the list stands now though is pretty good, so I hope you all enjoyed it. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.